So the next one, I start off the same way. So I'm looking at uh, factors of the negative 10, which are uh, a 1, a 2, and a 5, and a 10, and then the negative versions of each of those as well. And I would divide them by the factor of the a value, which are 1. So these are the values I'm going to use. So I'm just going to start off, and I might try something like a 2 again. I bring this guy down, I multiply, I add straight down, I multiply, I add straight down, I multiply, and I add straight down. And look at that, I got it on the first try, which means this thing factors into an x minus 2 and an x squared minus 4x plus 5. And then from here, I want to solve this thing. So I might try building a bridge here, two numbers that multiply to a 5 but add to a negative 4. It's not going to happen. This thing can't be uh, solved by factoring. This one equals a 2. But this one, I can't solve this by factoring. I either have to use completing the square or my quadratic formula. I would complete the square for this one, so I would subtract the 5 from each side. And that's because I have an a value that's 1 and a b value that's even. So now I do b divided by 2 and square. It gives me a 4. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So then I get x minus 2 squared equals a negative 1. I take the square root of each side and find out that x minus 2 equals plus or minus i, and then I add the 2 to each side. So I end up with two complex solutions here in addition to my one real solution. So my answers to this are the 2 and then the 2 plus or minus i. So I end up with three total solutions. Okay. So this one, I start off the same way. So I'm, I'm just doing a little guess and check. So I'm looking at the 30. So a 1, a 2, a 3, 5, a 6. Uh, quite a few of them here. Uh, a 10, a 15, and a 30. And then, of course, all the negative versions of each of those. So at least there's not too many options for this one. So I just start plugging some of these in. Maybe I'll try something like a, uh, a negative 2. The 2s have been working pretty well for me lately. So I do a 1, a negative 6, a negative 1, and a 30. I bring down the 1. I multiply. I add straight down. I multiply. I add straight down. I multiply. And I add straight down. And look at that. Got it on the first try. And uh, we won't always get it on the first try, so we do a little bit of guess and check until we find one. So now I'll go to x plus 2 is one of my factors. My other factor is the x squared minus 8x plus 15. And then I see if I can solve this by factoring uh, two numbers that multiply to a positive 15 but add to a negative 8. And that would be a negative 5 and a negative 3. So then my factors here, or my solutions, are a negative 2, a positive 5, and a positive 3. And that's it. For this one, I want to find all the values and then draw a graph. And these are probably the most difficult on this entire assessment. Uh, when we're approaching these problems, we want to take a very systematic approach. We want to always want to start off by finding the domain. Remember, these first three things are related. The main vertical asymptotes and holes in the graph. So to find the domain, I set the denominator equal to 0. Or rather, say the denominator cannot equal 0. And I solve that's going to be an x plus 2 and an x plus 2. And when I set each of those equal to 0, I find out that x cannot equal a negative 2. And I actually get that domain restriction twice, but I only need to write it once. Okay. Then I want to simplify this thing as far as it can be simplified. Uh, I factor everything completely and see if there's any common factors that cancel out. And in this case, there's not. If we want to rewrite this uh, this way as x plus 2 squared, that's fine. But really, there's no difference between this and the original problem. Nothing canceled out. All right. So now I look at my domain restrictions. Each of those domain restrictions is either a vertical asymptote or a hole in the graph. So the negative 2, if it gets canceled out, it's a hole in the graph. If it doesn't get canceled out, it's a vertical asymptote. So for this one, since it didn't get canceled out, it means that the x equals negative 2, that that restriction is a vertical asymptote. Since that's my only restriction and it's a vertical asymptote, it means there are no holes in the graph. Okay? The vertical asymptotes are the restrictions that don't get canceled. The holes in the graph are the restrictions that do get canceled. And then I look at horizontal or oblique asymptotes. 
Uh, here I've compared the degrees of the numerator and denominator. In this one, the degree of the numerator is 0, the degree of the denominator is 2. When the degree of the denominator is larger, it means I have a horizontal asymptote, and that horizontal asymptote is automatically y equals 0. For the y-intercept, I just go back and plug a 0 in for x. Essentially, I'm doing an xy chart here. So I plug a 0 in for x, and I'm going to plug that in right here into this simplified version. When I plug a 0 in here for x, I get 1 over. Uh, 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I get 1 fourth. So my y-intercept is 0, 1 fourth. Uh, for my x-intercepts, I plug a 0 in for y, which essentially means I'm just going to take the numerator and set it equal to 0. So I take the 1 and set it equal to 0, which, of course, that's absurd. Uh, 1 does not equal 0, which means there is no x-intercepts for this one. So there are none. So now I'm just going to graph this thing. I go over to my graph and I plot my vertical asymptote at negative 2. I plot my horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Uh, the only points that I have here are the, the y-intercept. The y-intercept is a 1 fourth, which is right around here somewhere. And really, that's not enough information to graph this thing. I can kind of see what this thing's going to look like. I know it's got to hug this line, go through the point and hug the other line. Uh, so I've kind of got this piece of the graph. But I don't know what it looks like over on this other end. So I have to plug in some more values into my xy chart. I've got to use this thing uh, to keep going. So maybe I'll plug in something like a, uh, a negative 3 in here. So I plug a negative 3 and see what I get. And again, I plug it into this simplified version. So I've got a negative 3 plus 2 squared like a 1. So I get a negative 3, 1, which is this sort of pair right here. And now I know it has to hug this line, go through the point, and hug the other line. Okay? So this is my graph uh, of the rational function. Okay? Applying the same thing to the next one. Once again, these first three things are related, so I'm going to start off by setting the denominator equal to 0. So I'll do x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0, or rather cannot equal 0. I factor this, that's a my x minus 2 and an x plus 1. So I say that x minus 2 cannot equal 0, the x plus 1 cannot equal 0, and I solve each. So x cannot equal 2, x cannot equal a negative 1. So my domain restrictions are that x cannot equal these two values. And now I want to simplify this thing completely. This numerator, I can factor a 2 out. Uh, the denominator I already factored once is the x minus 2 and the x plus 1. The numerator can be factored further because x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares, x plus 2 and x minus 2. And now it looks like I've got, I've got x minus 2s in, in common, so I cancel those out, which means the reduced version of this thing, my simplified function, is a 2 times x plus 2 over an x plus 1. And so now I look at my domain restrictions, vertical asymptotes versus holes in the graph. Uh, if the restriction got canceled, it's a hole in the graph. If it didn't, it's a vertical asymptote. So the negative 1, my first restriction, did not get canceled. It came from this factor, which is still there, which means that's my vertical asymptote. The uh, positive 2 got canceled out because this is the restriction it came from. It got canceled, so that's my hole in the graph is 2 comma something. That's just the x value for my hole in the graph. To find the y value for my hole in the graph, I have to plug that in. Okay, So we're, we're going basically to an xy chart here when we do this. I'm going to plug this 2 in to the simplified version of the function. So I've got 2 plus 2 in here over 2 plus 1. So it looks like that gives me a 4 times 2, which is 8, over 3. So 8 thirds, which is essentially 2 and 2 thirds. So that gives me my hole in the graph. Horizontal versus oblique, I look at the degrees. The degree of the numerator is a 2. The degree of the denominator is also a 2. Since the degrees are the same, I know it's going to be horizontal. And I just say y equals. I divide the leading coefficients. The leading coefficients are the numbers out front. There's a 1 and a 2 right here. So it's 2 divided by 1, which is a 2. In terms of my uh, y-intercept, I plug a 0 in for x. And again, I just plug that into that simplified version of this thing. So I do 2 times 0 plus 
2 all over 0 plus 1, which gives me a 4 over 1, which is 4. So it's 0 comma 4. The x-intercept, I just set uh, the y value equal to 0. And again, I do this for the simplified version. Uh, and for this, I just have to set the numerator equal to 0. If I have this numerator equals 0, I just have to solve for x. I divide by the 2 to get rid of that thing. And then I subtract the 2. I find out that x equals a negative 2. So it's a negative 2 comma 0. And then I just plot away, see what it looks like. See, vertical asymptote at negative 1. A horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. I've got a hole in the graph at 2, 2, and 2 thirds, which is right around here somewhere. And I use an open dot to signify that. Let me make that a little bit bigger. Uh, 0, 4, y-intercept. And negative 2 is my x-intercept. And really, that's enough information to graph this thing. I know I'm going to hug these lines, go through the points. Uh, that's terrible looking. Let me try again and hug each of these lines. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. Okay, So that's the graph of my rational function. Uh, this last one, I do the same thing. I start off by setting the denominator equal to 0. I say that this cannot equal 0. So I solve that uh, cannot equal a negative 2. And that's my domain restriction. And then each restriction is either a vertical asymptote or a hole in the graph. So I'm going to simplify this as far as I can. This factors into an x minus 4 and an x plus 3. So when I look at this, nothing cancels. Okay, I don't have any common factors, so nothing cancels. So my simplified version or my factored version is just this thing. It stays exactly the way it is, or I can use the original problem. It doesn't matter. It didn't simplify. But what that tells me is my one restriction did not get canceled out, which means it's a vertical asymptote. I don't have any other restrictions that could be holes in the graph, so there's no holes in the graph. For horizontal or oblique, I look at the degrees. In this one, the degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is 1. When the numerator has a larger degree, it means it's oblique. And I have to do synthetic division. Okay, So I take this guy, uh, the opposite of this, and put it in my box. So the negative 2, I write down my coefficients, the 1, the negative 1, and the negative 12. I bring down the 1, I multiply, I add straight down. I multiply, I add straight down. And really, this translates into an x minus 3 with a remainder of 6. But I don't care about the remainder here. I just want the thing that's y equals mx plus b, y equals the x minus 3. That's my oblique asymptote. And now for the y-intercept, I plug a 0 in for x. And you can plug this into the original problem, 0 squared minus 0 minus 12 over 0 plus 2, which is just a negative 12 over 2, which is a negative 6. That's my y-intercept. For the x-intercept, I essentially just set the numerator equal to 0. And since nothing canceled, I'm just going to set the factored form equal to 0, since that's how I'm going to solve this thing anyway. I set each factor equal to 0, so I find out that x equals 4, and x equals a negative 3. And now I just plot this stuff, see what it looks like. I've got a vertical asymptote at negative 2. I've got an oblique asymptote uh, of the equation y equals x minus 3, so that's a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 1, which looks like this. And now I just plot the other things that I know, the uh, y-intercept at negative 6, right about here, the x-intercepts at 4, and also at negative 3, right about here. And really, I know I'm going to hug this line, go through this point, and hug this other line. So I get a nice gentle curve over here. And I do the same thing with the other end. And if you want to plot more points, you could plug in like a negative 4 and find out that you get a negative 4 out. But we get these two gently sweeping curves, and that's it. That's the graph of our rational function. Hope this was helpful, and good luck on your test.